so when my name was first read out, I was in complete shock because I told everybody I wouldn't win. I was like, oh no, it's nice to be shortlisted, uh, but I won't win. <laughs> everybody else had more faith in me than I did. So um, there, was, there was a lot of shock. Um, I'm glad I didn't have my coffee in my hand because uh, it would have ended up all over our living room. Um, and um, yeah, but I, I felt really honoured to win it as well because um, this year has been a tough year for so many people and so many people but it's also been a year where we've seen so many people do so many amazing things in sport um, and use sport to help communities and stuff. So everybody who was on that shortlist and who was the finalist was, um, and even the ones who didn't make the finalists and were on the long list, they were all like worthy winners of the award. Uh, yeah, to win the award this year, like, um, I think like I said previously, 2020 is has been a really weird year like there's not been much competitive sport I'm quite lucky in that I play tennis it's a safe socially distanced sport so I could get back to training and get back on court and I managed to squeeze in one tournament in October before we went into lockdown 2.0 um, so I have had something to work towards um, it's been a very weird year for me as well because I'm a sports journalist so there's not really um, when I look back at it um, at the beginning of this year we were wondering whether the Australian Open was going to happen and we were going to get out there because of bushfires and then we've gone from that till nobody can travel the world. Um, so um, I'm glad I got my trip to Australia last year though, I don't think I could handle two winters without the war. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's been a very weird, where, weird year from a sports journalist point of view as well just because things haven't been happening but what's been really great is, is how people have used sport for their communities, how they use it um, for the good. You know, you've got Stewie, who I was nominated alongside, who um, raised all that money for um, East Anglian Children's Hospice. Um, I mean, well done. I, I mean, I can't walk 5K every day, but I wouldn't have run 5K every day. Um, and um, I'm hoping there will be a sort of return to normal in 2021, but um, we've still got a long road to go and it will be a slow road back. <laughs> 2021. Well, sadly, I'm not getting my 30 degree heat in January this year because um, of a global plague. So I'm not going out to the Australian Open. Um, but I mean, I hope, I'm hoping to go and report for my first Paralympics if all goes okay. Um, I'm also ho hoping to get back to competing a bit more in tennis. So this year, um, usually in my training, because I'm traveling the world with my day job as well, I don't get such intense training with my tennis because I'm not. Um, around a lot and I have to deal with jet lag. Uh, this year I've kind of had like six to eight months where I can just focus on my playing of my tennis. Unfortunately for me that's managed to convince my coach that I should be competing more which I've diff I, I kind of avoided. Uh, <laughs> I kept using my day job as a thing so I think there'll probably be a bit more competing next year as well and I think for me as well uh, one important thing is um, is inclusion in sport. So I think we We've seen the benefits sports can have um, during this time and with the mental health crisis that everybody's talking about um, that we're going to have, um, the benefits it can have and I think now's the time to when we build back, to build back better so we have a more inclusive sports industry. Um, from a local perspective, I've seen here at this club, at my tennis club in Peterborough, um, how easy it is to do inclusion. You know, I'm not, I've got quite a complex disability never once has any adaptation been too much for them and actually I will be honest they might be panicking in the background about a way to adapt for me but I never see that um, and that's something you're starting to see more in sport but I'd love to see and in every kind of sports provision whether that's tennis whether that's basketball whether that's you know football because it's so important and it's not about necessarily having a separate thing for disabled people it's about inclusion you know because we like the invite to the party but we also like to be called up onto the dance floor and get involved too so I think one of the real passions for me as a journalist and as an athlete is that inclusion because places do do it right and where I train in tennis do it fantastically well um, but there are places that do it wrong um, and I think instead of calling them out and not helping places that are doing it wrong I think that we can we can get the places that are doing it right like the like city of peterborough tennis club to go up to them and say look this is how we've done it 
and this is what we can do and this is how we normalise disability in sport because that's basically what they do with me here. They normalise my disability. I'm not Gemma the um, disabled tennis player, I'm Gemma the tennis player and, and that's the best way to be. Yeah, I'll have to thank my mum because up until April she never picked up a tennis racket in her life. Um, she never hit a tennis ball. It was just, she watched tennis, she watched it really well and she did, um, I report on the wheelchair tennis tour a lot and if anybody sat next to her, uh, caught side while I've been reporting, she's very good at giving the elite level players advice, even though she never picked up a tennis racket before. But uh, she came on board when tennis opened up again in April and uh, she learned how to hit a tennis ball and just hit with me. So when at first it was only in households we could play, my mum hit with me and then we returned to one-to-ones and stuff. So my mum's played a really big part in this year because uh, she's learned how to play tennis and she's continuing to learn how to play tennis. I'd also like to thank um, the City of Peterborough Tennis Club and all of the coaches here, like um, Max, who is um, the person who coaches me most, but also Bill, Anita, Jane, the two Jameses, and um, Katrin because really the coaching staff around here have been absolutely brilliant and um, I've had a bit of a tough year personally um, so I can't really not say thank you to my friends who've helped me through it there's been a really really select group of my friends I won't name them because it will embarrass them uh, but there's a really really close group of friends who I have um, who have literally been by my side from day one uh, from the day I had the car accident from um, They've been there to kind of, um, kind of chiven me along, and they played a really important part in me um, doing what I do this year as well. You know, from I have one friend who, throughout the second lockdown, because they knew that I was so upset that I couldn't get on a tennis court, sent me a present every week um, to say I survived another week in lockdown without tennis. <laughs> uh, so, and it's just little things like that. But it's not even sending me things it's zoom calls it's playing cards against humanity over um what, uh, over zoom on our mobile phones you know it's little things like that and we've all helped each other out you know it's not one been a one way thing we've all helped each other out but um those that's that's made all the difference really